Welcome to the next episode of Build Your Own R2-D2 where we're going to be looking at issues 12 and 13. Yes, R2-D2 is now a teenager. He is now 13 and I hope he doesn't cause many problems for me in his teenage years. But before we get started, I'm just going to turn the camera around so it's facing me. Hello. Uh, and I just want to take this time to apologise. I know that I've been a bit slapdash in my videos over the last month or so making mistakes, uh, the quality of the editing hasn't been up to speed, the sound especially. Um, and yeah, I want to apologise for that. Uh, there's many different reasons why that has been happening. Um, I've been rushing through the videos because I've been doing the R2 videos, the DeLorean videos, the X-Wing videos, and I've also been filming and putting a lot of work into a special one-off video, which I can now reveal to you as a Thunderbird build, Thunderbird 1 build, which will be coming up um, very shortly. But I have been um, using my time very poorly, trying to get lots and lots of stuff done in uh, in the short time I have. Basically, my filming schedule is a Saturday morning, two or three hours, uh, to try and get all these builds done and then filmed, and then I edit throughout that day. Um, and I put a lot of pressure under myself um, to get them all done because I'm doing so many. So that is why they have been slapdash. But um, the X-Wing has gone, the Thunderbird has gone now as well. So it's just the two builds I'm focusing on and the videos will have, I'm not gonna say no mistakes because I probably will still make mistakes, but gonna have less mistakes. So yeah, I just wanted to apologize really. It is uh, a lot of work in the very short time I have to do it, uh, but I will try and not make mistakes. Uh, one way that you guys can help me out, and I know I've done a bit of plugging of this recently, but if you could go onto my Patreon and give whatever you can just to help me out, that would be fantastic. It will help the channel um, oh, regain, I guess, the, the quality that I want it to um, and help me out with time management and things like that. Um, if you want more details about how it can help, um, I'll post another video about that. If you want, uh, just let me know in the comments down below if you want to know more or slag me off if you think I'm doing a shameless plug. But I, I, I do just want to apologise that the videos have not been as good a quality as they could have been. Um, and if you're watching this for the second time, thank you. I have posted this both on the R2 video and the DeLorean video, exactly the same clip, because I know that some of you only watch one or the other, but for those of you that watch both or all my videos, you're seeing it again for the second time. So thank you for watching. I'm now going to turn the camera back around and get started on this build. So thank you very much for uh, putting up with my face for that moment. Uh, let's get started and have a look at what comes in issue 12. So here are the parts we get in issue 12. We have more of the leg metal parts, which I'll go into in just a moment. We get more dome parts, of course, and we get the first part of the base of the stand for the dome. And if we just bring in the parts that we get in issue 13, we see uh, we get the legs as well. So um, you will have to attach them with screws. They've got a screw hole there and they've got a hole there for the screws and you attach them in there, something like that. I'll look at that in just a second. Uh, also in issue 13, we get more dome parts, as you can see, and more of the metal dome parts as well. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is the base and then the leg and then the dome. So uh, let's get started on that base. So these are all the parts you will need to complete the base of the stand. Uh, you will also need these screws as well, which we got last uh, video, issue 10 or 11, I can't remember which. But yeah, okay, so the first thing you do is you get this part here. You can get this part, which is different to these parts, as it's got an extra little tab on there like that. You push the tab into the bottom of uh, the base there, and you line up the hole so it fits in there like that. And that is the first one that you attach. And then you push in the next one. It's not wanting to go in there. There we go. There like that, and that one in there like that, and there you have the stand. Uh, you do screw them in uh, through the holes there, but I'm going to do that off camera. 
and I'll show you what to do with the rest of it at the end of this video when we've done a bit more on the dome. Okay then moving on to uh, the metal leg parts of R2D2 that came with issue 11 and with issue 12. Uh, these were the parts here. Uh, you also need to use these screws here. They're slightly bigger than the dome screws and we get five of them there. And also we need to use these nuts as well. Uh, they're slightly bigger than the dome nuts. Uh, they're not nuts. They're also not nuts. Where are the dome nuts gone? Here they are. So these are the dome nuts uh, shaking now and here are the leg nuts. As you can see, they are bigger in size. So what you have to do first of all is you get your first pieces together like I already have done here. Uh, so if you turn it around this way, you'll see that the um, wording is on this side here with the sticky up tabs facing this way as well. Uh, what you have to do is you flip it over and you'll see in this hole here, you'll see a nut shape. You get one of the nuts, pop it in there like so. And then you get one of the screws and you just pop it in there like that. And secure it, oh sorry, like that. So that is the first piece all put together. Um, very sturdy piece, I've said this before. But it's a very steady piece. Okay, so moving on to this part here, which is a connector. Um, you'll see it's got the wording again. Uh, left front rotating arm. Left foot, I don't know what LFR stands for. Um, you see that they've got a nut shape on this side. So you don't want to put it on that way like that. You want to flip it around. It's got a nice little groove cut out for it. You push it in like that. And it's got little pegs to hold it in place to make it easier to screw in. So once again, you just get your nut, pop it in there, make sure that piece doesn't pop out, and then screw it together like that. So it's in there like that. And then you do exactly the same thing again, flip it over, put a nut in. Oops. And get a screw. Fastener, I should say, rather than nuts. I don't know. Terminology. It's wasted on me. At least I'm getting it right, eh? Hey? So it looks like that. And that is that piece all done. You then get these two pieces and you put them together like this. So you'll see this is where the axle will be for the leg. Um, once again, you have the written words here. LFR 13 and 14 facing together that way with these two little loopy bits facing this way as well. And then all you have to do is connect it like this to there. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. <laughs> And when it's all done, it will look like this. And I just want to say for this piece, I really like how it's got like that jigsaw cutout uh, motif all the way through. It gives you security that you know that you're putting the pieces in the right place and it helps it fasten together very, very nicely as well. Nice sol solid piece of metal this. So if I just get the leg that we have already done, which is here. Now it doesn't say to do this in the instructions. I'm just kind of putting it together to show you what I think it will look like. I'm not entirely sure whether these two, uh, these four, I should say loopy parts here, go that way or that way. I'm guessing they're this way facing outwards, but I could be wrong, we don't know yet. So you'll face it over the axle and then you'll see that it all lines up with the blue part there and the screw holes there like that. Maybe it does go this way, so to give it some stability. Hmm. No, it seems to be the same either way. We don't know at this stage, but that is what the inside of the leg will look like eventually. Whether this will face that way or that way is left to be determined. And that is all we can do on our 2 d 2s leg at the moment. Okay, so moving on then to the dome parts that we get in issues 12 and 13. You can see that these two pieces here are exactly the same, whereas these two pieces here have slight differences about them. This one, first of all, has this rectangular bit and these two little holes here. And then this one here doesn't have a straight uh, bar along there. 
it has little cutout parts as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach the odd parts uh, so that you know where they go on the dome. Oh, and also I just want to say, you know, part of the comedy of errors that wasn't that funny. I did get these two parts uh, in the wrong place last video. What you should have is this part here, which is similar to the other two parts that we have. Um, oh, you want it a half overlapping the open space here, whereas this one, the nice wide one, is next to it there. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to attach these two parts. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so you can see here the parts and where they go. So we have the little circle here next to the open space. That is where you put the one with the rectangle and the two holes. And then right next to it is the one uh, is where you put the one with not the solid bar along there. And then of course there's two spaces left for the regular pieces, which I'm just going to go ahead and do now. <laughs> have the dome all completed now I've only done one screw in each hole just for time uh, but yeah that is what it looks like when it's all done so just to give you a little rotation got the top hole there two holes there big hole there for these two parts and then this big wide cutout parts there and then the one without the black bar there and that is what the dome looks like. So uh, all that's left really is to put the dome on the stand. So I'm just going to finish screwing this in and then I'll put it on the completed stand. And here we have the dome all completed on its stand. But before I go on to the stand, I just want to say make sure you keep this piece safe or these pieces safe, I should say. Uh, we will be using them next time and they will make up the uh, top of the next layer to this dome. Yes, there is going to be another layer about that thick to go on this dome. Now, a couple of you may be asking me, Mr. Chris, why does your uh, stand look wooden when mine looks metal? And I will say to you, firstly, don't be so formal. You can just call me Chris without the mister. And secondly, I'll say because it is wooden. I have lost my metal part since last video. So um, for some bizarre reason, I could find uh, chopsticks or skewers, I should say. Um, yeah. Uh, and I use them as a makeshift stand till I find the metal one. It works very well. Uh, but for the for those of you who don't have skewers, put the metal bit in place like that and then just pop the dome into the hole there like that. It is a little harder to do with skewers. It'll fit more, it'll fit nicer for you, I think, with the metal stand. And there we have the dome on its stand ready to have more work done to it. Uh, and that is where I'm going to end this video. <laughs> a little bit of a mistake, but not a big one. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure you join me next time when we start the next layer of this dome. And I hope that you'll check out the other videos I do as well. Until next time, guys, take care. Bye-bye.